hello viewers, subscribers, visitors to the channel. Welcome to Jim's Mix. We're going to do a little unboxing this evening, uh, which is the first part of what will become a review on this item in the box. Well, what do we have in the box? We have a Maven. Uh, it is the CRS.2 CRS four by 16 by 44 second focal plane scope. Uh, I'm going to get into a little more detail on it, but I just want to do a real quick unboxing. Uh, they're here in Wyoming, up in Lander, Wyoming. Uh, the optics are actually made in Japan to their specifications, and I'm sure that you can find out a lot more stuff. I called them up, told them what I wanted. Very nice, very prompt, fast and quick shipping. There's no middleman. These are not available in a store. You can go to maven, M-A-V-E-N, dot com. And that'll take you to their website. And uh, I think it may be mavenbuilt.com. Uh, we'll try to put a link in the video when we do this video. So here we go. This is what I did go ahead and cut it open so I wouldn't have to struggle with that on the video. You might see my dog Scout. He may bounce in and out of the video. Uh, you may see a little set of floppy ears sticking up from time to time. Uh, so here we go. Let's see what's in the box. Cart. Uh, uh, lots of paper, uh, paper, it's a box in a box. It comes with a, looks like a catalog of some sort. Yeah, it's winter, spring 24. Uh, pretty nicely done, looks like. Uh, it's got a lens cloth uh, in here, very nice. Uh, it's got a Maven Optics uh, sticker. Another Maven's optic sticker, uh, the receipt, and uh, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I, I try not to do those, and this is uh, paid for out of my pocket. It's five hundred dollars uh, plus tax and shipping. It was five forty-five to the front door, uh, and I'm in Wyoming, so it's just a little ways down the road, uh, and it's got a page. I think I saw it uh, here at the back. Uh, that just kind of gives all the specifications. Uh, so that's it. They're in Lander, Wyoming, uh, just a couple, two and a half hours up the road. Uh, empty box now. Uh, we've got another box that's in the box uh, with a piece of plastic over it. And in that, we've got a, a box inside a cover. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty. I, I like things that are simple, and you've heard me say that on my uh, on, on my site before. But it's very simple. It's uh, kind of subdued, if you will, and I really, really do like that. And then we have a uh, another little card thing, kind of stuck there with a little piece of glue, and uh, we'll look and see what that has. You'll notice Maven has a uh, a kind of a trademark is their orange. And we'll see what that looks like uh, on the optic itself. Okay, uh, this has got uh, optics instructions. Again, very simple. Looks like the language is very simple. It talks like a uh, talks about the reticle that's in it. And again, I want to emphasize this is a second focal plane optic, uh, which would mean that the image uh, will come and go depending on your uh, power setting. Uh, but the crosshair will remain the same. Uh, and the holdovers and things like that uh, will work at the maximum setting, but won't be as accurate following that. Now it's got a, looks like some kind of a composite uh, box, CRS2-1644. Uh, here. And uh, it's really a tough little box. Uh, so here's as it comes in the box. Uh, the optic. A uh, little spacer here above the uh, elevation. Uh, <clears throat> it's got a uh, neoprene scope cover. Slips over. Kind of like a... Uh, kind of reminds me of a hospital shoe. They give you the hospital. But, uh, but that's what it's got. It's in plastic. Uh, little rubber band on the end. Uh, and this plastic's really 
kind of heavy duty. Uh, it's got a silicate package in there. You know you don't eat those, right? Uh, so just, <laughs> you don't eat this stuff. It's, uh, I think it says that on it, uh, but it's in Japanese. Oh, it says, uh, do not eat a <laughs> silica package. So, okay, here we go. This, again, carries through that little bit of orange theme. That's, other than that, it's black. Uh, it's uh, almost a total matte black. This is, uh, of course, a capped turret optic uh, with uh, parallax adjustment. And I think it goes from... Uh, 25 yards to infinity uh, yeah 25 yards to infinity uh, that op that feels really nice smooth and it's not difficult or stiff but it's really smooth it's not going to be jumping around on you uh, let's see if we can get the scope caps off and uh, they're pretty snug so Let's look at the windage. I'm going to see if Nick can uh, zoom in on this. Uh, cap turrets. Uh, they're metal, uh, aluminum. The turrets are resettable to, to zero. So here is the uh, elevation. I don't know what he can get there. We'll give it just a second. And this is the windage. And this is a quarter MOA, I do believe. Yep, one clicks a quarter MOA. It's very clearly marked. Uh, so I'm going to see if he can really zoom in and let's, uh, let's play with the uh, sound a little bit on the turrets and feel what they feel like. Again, this will probably be uh, a two or a three part optic it's very light I didn't look at the weight on it but we'll see if we can get it quiet and see if we can hear uh, these turrets as we turn them we'll start with the elevation turret okay very audible uh, but not like horribly very very tactile uh, very smooth uh, they feel really good uh, for the uh, elevation. Um, I really like the way that feels. Let's do the windage. Same thing. I don't think he's going to be able to pick this up on the camera. But it's uh, it's very good as well. Um, I do not uh, see a mark to bring it back to zero, uh, but I don't see well after it starts getting dark either. Uh, this thing's been out in the cold all day. Let's see what the ocular adjustment feels like. Okay, this is a European style uh, ocular adjustment for your uh, focus for the crosshair. Uh, it's very smooth. I don't know if anybody else closes their eyes when they're trying to feel something to, for the tactile feel, but, but I find I do. It's very smooth. I uh, don't feel any graininess, grittiness, uh, or anything like that. Uh, let's see what the... Uh, and, and this little raised piece uh, gives you a good purchase. It's got a, a nice uh, marker on it to point at it. Uh, it looks like, let's see um, how this feels. We'll kind of turn it slow and so that I can feel. It's very stiff. Definitely going to need that uh, little wing, I'm going to call it. But it's very smooth. There's no grit, no grittiness in it. Uh, it's very, very smooth. It is a bit tight. Uh, like I said, you're going to you're going to have to get a hold of it. Uh, it looks like it's about uh, half half around. You start out here, and you'll go all the way around. So it's about a half uh, half turn. Uh, and so my initial impress impressions are 
Uh, you know, it's in the house, so there's not much you can do with that in here. Uh, but uh, we'll get it outside, and uh, we'll get it mounted on a rifle, and we'll give it uh, a shakedown crew, so to speak, and we'll see how it does in the field. Uh, folks, I, I, I'm not a target shooter person. I do like to... Sh I'm like, I think it was Harry Potter field that said... The only guns that are interesting or accurate guns, and he probably repeated somebody else. Uh, but uh, I do like accurate. I like hunting. And I like it simple. That's why I picked this CRS2. I like the fact that you have a parallax adjustment. I like the power settings uh, and all of that stuff. So uh, I'm actually building a rifle you'll hear more about later. Uh, and that is a... Uh, 25-06 actually improved uh, and here on the uh, table uh, just a little spoiler maybe uh, I'm putting it in a Magpul Hunter 700 stock uh, with Magpul floor plates and of course in an AIS magazine uh, this is a Model 700, it was dated probably in the 60s. It was a 30 alt 6 and the barrel had long since died of a, died of somebody shooting some old mercury primed military ammunition and didn't get it all cleaned out. So it, it died a short death. So this is a McGowan Precision Rimage Barrel in 25 alt 6 actually improved. Uh, it is 26 inches long. It's a medium uh, Palma weight barrel with a hunter style of crown. Uh, I hope that this is going to become uh, my uh, coyote gun. And uh, when I go to uh, Texas, I hope we'll get to uh, do some pig hunting. I've got it in this Magpul 700 stock. So I want to do a full review on this. I've got a couple of these, uh, and uh, I just want to kind of go over them for a, I'm going to call it a, a chassis, really. Uh, it's uh, for the money. It's about $220 to $260, $70, depending on where you get it. Without the floor plate, that will be extra. Uh, and it it's they're, they're just really good. I'm really enjoying them, length of pull and all that stuff. But we'll get into a full uh, review on that. Uh, so that's it, I guess. I uh, hope that little un unboxing gets you started. There'll be a part two as we put this thing through its paces, and uh, and I'm not going to do the fancy stuff like the special cameras to go through it and all that stuff. Uh, I don't have a means to do that, but I will tell you how practical it is, how well it works, how well it holds zero, and how it'll perform in the field for you on a real hunting trip. And Wyoming can test your equipment very much in a hunting situation. So thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, share these videos. Uh, leave comments. I try to reply to all my comments. really appreciate uh, the comments. And I would encourage you to go back and look at other videos that you may be interested in. A Bagar B14 review or whatever that may be. Maybe bolt jeweling. Uh, you'll see that there's a lot of comments in there and some really good questions that come up along the way. So this is Jim in Wyoming saying, be safe, be prepared, enjoy your Second Amendment freedoms. God bless you. Thank you.